Here at Learning Electrics, we've had several requests about completing the different forms and certificates that we use in the electrical trade. In this video, it is the turn of the Electrical Installation Certificate, or EIC. Many people are unsure just what they should be writing in the different boxes, and we hope with this video to make certificate completion a lot easier. This is a two-page certificate and we will look at the copy in the wiring regulations book on pages 462 and 463. You must be aware that the certificate is not legally complete without two other important documents attached to it and these are a schedule of inspections and a schedule of test results and examples of these can also be found in the wiring regulations book. An electrical installation certificate is for a new installation in a new property or a rewire and refurbishment of an existing property. An addition to an existing installation that includes the provision of a new circuit, new circuit breakers, new wiring etc. or for a consumer unit change. The certificate should only be issued when all the remedial work and snagging lists are completed. It is a legal document and you are making a declaration that this installation is 100% correct and safe for use by the client. Let's create a scenario to help us to fill in this example. Imagine that you have been given the job of installing and testing a new socket ring final circuit into a garage conversion in a domestic property. Your boss has already surveyed the site and he has designed the new circuit, chosen the cable sizes, positions of sockets, circuit breaker sizes, etc. He has already calculated that the additional new load will not exceed the safe load for the existing consumer unit and the new circuit will be protected by a 32 amp BSEN 60898 type B circuit breaker and there is a spare way for this in the consumer unit and all the circuits in the property have additional protection by 30 milliamp RCDs. You are to complete the initial verification of this new circuit. In this video, we will look at completing the electrical installation certificate part of the paperwork, which is often shortened to EIC. Have a look now in Appendix 6, and you will find the electrical installation certificate that we will be using on pages 462 and 463. This is what we call a three signature certificate. There is a separate section for signing by the designer, the installer and the tester. Only sign for the work that you have actually done. If you sign it, you are legally responsible. However, if you did everything, as is the case with many small traders, there is also a single signature certificate where you sign for the design, installation and testing with just one signature. Copies of the model forms to use in your work are available free of charge from the IET website and we will give you these details at the end of this video. I find the best way to complete the forms is to imagine the certificate to be made up of several different sections. This makes filling it in much easier. It is nine small steps instead of one big one. And you can see here the different sections and this is what we will do in this video. Let's begin with page one of the EIC. All that this page wants to know is where the job is, what the job is and who designed it, built it and tested it. Starting at the top of the page, we are asked for details of the client and the address at which the work is carried out. With rented properties, this is the name of your customer, the person that is paying you followed by a description of the property. This should tell anybody reading the certificate the type of building and installation. For example, a three bed semi with garage, a single storey convenience store, a one bedroom flat, etc. And then describe the actual installation work. In this case, it is a new ring final circuit to a garage conversion. And tick the box for addition to existing installation in this example. Be specific about the new circuit that you've installed. Write in there sockets in garage or added light in main bedroom etc. Don't just say new sockets or added lights 
they could be anywhere. If anything goes wrong in the future, say the sockets in the lounge catch fire, the house burns down and six people are in hospital. The fact that your paperwork says sockets in the garage is going to put you in the clear and it does happen. When an insurance company is looking for someone to blame, this is your squeaky clean get out of jail card. There is now a section for each of the involved persons to make a declaration that the work meets the requirements of BS 7671 wiring regulations. In our example, you did not design the installation, your boss did, and you just followed his drawings. If you didn't design it, then you don't sign for the design. Leave it blank for your boss to complete. You will sign for the construction and the inspection and test part only. In law, what you sign for, you are responsible for. Take ownership of your own work, yes, but do not take on that of somebody else. If it goes to court, which it does from time to time, the first thing the prosecution lawyer will ask you is, is this your signature? Make sure you enter the correct date or amendment number for the regs book that you are using and, in our example, you must complete and sign the constructor's part and the inspector's part. At the bottom of page one is a tiny section, date of next inspection. The designer will often decide the date to the first periodic inspection. After all, they know what the customer brief was, what the customer is expecting the new circuit to do. For domestic properties, this is often 10 years for a property occupied by the owner or owner's family and five years for a rented property. Industrial and commercial installations may be a lot less depending on the likelihood of damage in use. As electricians, all that we can do is to recommend a date or time interval. If the owner of the property doesn't want the inspection to be done at the due date, then that is their decision and they are assuming responsibility for that decision. The law changed recently regarding rented dwellings and it is now a requirement that the landlord meets his legal obligations. But owned property is not included in the new rules. Don't be surprised if some private houses are not inspected for 30 years or more. Unfortunately, some house owners don't see the point until they have a problem. On the second page, we are asked for contact details for the signatories. This page also asks about the incoming supply details of the intake position and about the consumer unit. The customer must have information needed to contact the company if they have a problem. But they may not have a problem. They may want to have more work done or give your details to a friend. Again, only enter your information in the sections for which you are responsible. Then there is a section for the supply characteristics and the earthing arrangements. What is actually arriving at the property? First, the earthing arrangements. You must get this right. You will need this information later. Is it a single phase or three phase supply into the building? A single phase supply is classed as two live wires, a phase and a neutral. And obviously it is AC. Did you check the incoming polarity? Tick if you did. Relative to earth is the phase at 230 volts and the neutral at zero volts. If not, you have reversed polarity. It happens and it is dangerous. For nature of supply, we will enter the nominal voltage and the nominal frequency. For UK houses on the public supply network, this will be 230 volts AC and 50 hertz or 50 cycles per second. You must measure the prospective fault current at the source of the installation, usually at the consumer unit. Prospective fault current uses the abbreviation PFC, but, as here, the abbreviation IPF is also used. It is the same thing, it just means current prospective fault. From the prospective fault current, we can calculate the ZE, or external fault impedance, for the property. And some meters will calculate this for you. Lastly, for this section, the supply protective device. In other words, the main fuse. This will most likely be a BS1361 fuse or the later BS88 fuses. Older properties with a lower demand 
may still have 60 amp fuses installed. You may come across 80 amp fuses, but most often nowadays these will be 100 amp devices. The next section asks about the particulars of the installation, beginning with the means of earthing. Is the earth supplied by the distributor, that is TNS or TNCS, or is it a TT system where the customer must have their own earth electrode? If it is TT systems, then details of the type and location of the earth electrode must be filled in. Maximum demand of the whole installation must be entered, usually in amps, so cross out KVA. Diversity can be taken into account for maximum demand. This tells us that not everything in the house will be switched on at the same time. People turn lights off behind them. The shower is only used for 10 minutes a day. The cooker is only on for 30 minutes a day, and so on. If you add all the breaker sizes up in the consumer unit, you may arrive at a figure of 150 amps for the whole house, whereas a figure using diversity will be much lower. An average house will typically be 80 to 90 amps as a maximum demand, and for most of each day, a lot lower than this. Then we are asked, what the main bonding conductors and main earth are made of and their cross-sectional areas. This is usually copper nowadays, but back in the 60s and 70s there was a copper shortage and aluminium conductors were common. And you will come across both. If you are working on a housing estate where one house has aluminium conductors, then most of the rest of the estate will probably be the same. The problem with aluminium is that now 50 years after being installed, it will have become very brittle. Try to move it and it will crack and fall apart and need replacing with copper. Moving on, we are asked about the main switch. For domestics, this will be in the consumer unit. And where is the consumer unit? In our case, the hallway. But it could be under the stairs, in the garage, in the kitchen or somewhere else. What is the BSEN number of the main switch? the big red switch as I call it. Usually it is a BSEN 60947-3 and a two pole device. Phase and neutral switching being linked so that if you turn one off the other goes off at the same time. What is the maximum current rating of the main switch and the voltage rating? It will be on the front or side of the switch. Domestic main switches are not adjustable so the setting is the same as the rating. If the main switch is a different type and maybe has an integral RCD built into it, then these details need to be noted as well. Otherwise, it is NA, not applicable. Almost finished. This section shown here in yellow is for comments on the existing installation. Note that your own work, what you went there to do, should have no comments to make. It should be 100% correct and safe before you even start to fill in this certificate. This is for observations that do not impact on your work. For example, you notice that the lounge light switch is damaged and needs replacing. This section is where you bring it to the customer's attention in writing. You have a duty of care in law to tell them and this proves that you have done this. If they don't want to pay to have it repaired, then that is not your problem. You have discharged your duty of care. But this section is not saying that you must go around the house and find things wrong. It's only if you notice them, which is why I always write non-noticed if I don't actually see any. I'm not saying that there are no problems, it's just that I didn't notice any. I was too busy getting on with my own work. Finally, confirmation that you've attached a schedule of inspections and a schedule of test results. As we mentioned at the beginning, the electrical installation certificate is not valid without these being attached to it. It is part of your job to complete all the paperwork. The customer will have no idea that some of the paperwork is missing. It is up to you to be professional and to make sure that you do the full job. Any other electrician that visits the house after you will need this paperwork to make his job a little easier and safer. If he knows what the test results were from five years ago, he or she can quickly tell if the installation is deteriorating or has a problem. 
In summary, make notes as you complete the installation. Use a notebook. I do for everything. Many electricians will complete the EIC in rough as they work through the job and then write it out neat back at the office. And this way you don't miss any essential information. Treat the certificate as being in several distinct blocks. 90% of the EIC can be completed with what you already know, the customer's name and the address etc. Or just by observation, looking at the BS numbers and so on. The only measurements to be made for the EIC are the PFC or IPF and ZE and checking the voltage polarity. We also have an in-depth video on completing a schedule of test results and a video on completing a minor works certificate. We will leave links to these in this video's description. And a video on completing a schedule of inspections will be published very soon. All the model forms that are in the Wiring Regs book are available in PDF format and can be found on the IET website. They can then be printed off for your own use. Do a Google search. The IET BS 7671 2018 model forms and you will find the PDF file. Practice is the key to being good at filling in the forms. Sitting on site, looking at the forms for the first time is not the best way to learn. Print off some forms from the model forms PDF and practice on your own house. Who cares then if it takes you 20 minutes or two hours? Throw it away, do it again. Throw it away and do it again. It is the best way to learn and it will make you look professional and competent on site. Well, that's it for this video. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've added to your knowledge. Please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and to be sure of not missing our next Tech Tips video. Subscribing also helps us too and we do appreciate this. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.